What is up, crypto hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack our cryptocurrency, blockchain, and NFT, and now metaverse education. If you guys are brand new here and those topics sound interesting to you, slap a like on this video, be subscribed with notification bell on. And on this episode, I'm going to be sitting down on my panel in New York City for NFT NYC. Now I had my buddy Adam Charles record this from the front row because I didn't know this, but the city of New York actually has a union rule that says that no professional equipment can be used to film from the stage or front row unless it's a union worker, which I found pretty fascinating, figured that out at the last minute. Morgan Stone, who was sitting next to me from Rue Troop, who's actually come on the Sandstorm stream before. That was news to him. He had like this awesome videographer uh, with him with an incredible rig that I was talking to the guy about <laughs> beforehand. And ultimately, we had to do this with an iPhone uh, sitting in the front row that Adam could capture. And he did a great job of getting as much as he could with the best audio that we could get before this goes out on the NFT NYC stream. This panel was really, really cool. I mean, it talks about work in NFTs. We talk about the importance of leveling the playing field. And just overall, I was really impressed by Sheila, the, the moderator. She started a company called Proof of Learn. That's a really fantastic kind of uh, education focused platform for the metaverse. And I'm continuing conversation with both Morgan and Sheila after the panel, just because it was so cool to kind of talk through the importance of leveling the playing field and earning and learning and working uh, with NFTs. So the whole concept that I wanted to lead with was that Sandstorm is effectively matching people from all over the world that are metaverse builders in Sandbox, Decentraland and beyond with brands. So brands come through, they put a proposal in, builders can bid on that proposal and they can get a job working on a 3D experience within this open metaverse that has kind of flourished over the last few years. Overall, my NFT NYC experience was awesome. This was a highlight for sure, being on a panel for the third year in a row. But by far and away, I think the sentiment was positive. For everybody out there that you know hasn't heard anything about NFT NYC, everybody was just hyped. Everybody was excited, regardless of the market, taking a full-blown <laughs> pre-fall before the conference. People were building. There were so many cool projects. All these floors at the Marriott Marquis in Times Square were just crammed with awesome projects. People were just excited, eager, and just creating. And this is what a bear market truly is, is people are gonna continue to build. So it's not a bear market, it's a build market. And I'm super passionate about seeing builders light up when you ask them like, hey, what are you doing? What are you building? And they just get so excited. It doesn't matter about the price of Ethereum or Bitcoin or Solana or Avalanche or anything like that. They're literally just building and creating because they think that this is the future and they're the ones that are making it the future. And I'm honored to be building in this space with all of the thousands of people uh, that were at that conference. So without further ado, let's show the full-blown panel here of the NFT NYC panel featuring Morgan Stone from uh, Root Troop, myself from Sandstorm, and Sheila from Proof of Learn. I'm Sheila Marcello. I'm co-founder and CEO of a company called Proof of Learn. We want to be the leading educational platform in the metaverse, and I'm joined here by Steve and Morgan. Super excited to talk to you guys. Um, so why are we talking about level the playing field? Here, Steve, maybe you can talk about Sandstorm and also why this panel for you? Yeah, thanks so much for having me here. Shout out to everybody that has heard of Sandstorm before. My name is Steve McGarry, I'm the CEO and founder. What it is, it's a platform that connects builders in the metaverse like Sandbox and Decentraland with brands. So we've seen a lot of demand from the brand side to get into the metaverse. And we built out this platform on Polygon to basically connect the two and help level the playing field for people to get jobs and gigs from these brands that want a 3D experience. That's, uh, that's Sandstorm. And speaking of jobs, Morgan, do you want to talk about why level the playing field and why are you building what you're building in crypto? Sure. Yeah, my name is Morgan Stutt. I'm the founder and CEO of Root Troop. We are developing the first on-chain job marketplace. 
Uh, so the reason why we are doing that and you know to tie into level the playing field is there's a lot of opportunity in this space that talent doesn't have visibility to. And on the flip side, there is a lot of need for talent that the people with money, the VC backed founders, the CEOs who are building projects and companies, they don't know where to find this talent. So what we have done before getting into the on-chain job marketplace, which we can do in a bit, um, we have built out a bounty board uh, that has been all about bringing talent and bridging them with employers. Uh, so we've seen about 350 Web3 job postings on that bounty board, and almost 100 successful placements. Uh, so we really just want to level the playing field uh, by giving even the little guy the opportunity to take these big jobs and you know have these potentially life-changing moments where they step into Web3 full-time. So when you're, um, I, I've been in the diversi diversity space for a long time. I founded a company called Care.com to really help women to provide access. And so I was in the internet in the 90s and always a challenge. How do you guys intend to attract and market to the diverse set that you both feel strongly about and passionate about? Steve, do you want to start? Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a fantastic question and very important topic. So we stream from our platform five times a week and we reach 11.2 million people a month across all our channels, and that's across many different continents. But what we're trying to do is basically educate and onboard people from all walks of life into Vox Edit or Sandbox, and you know various different Blender tools and things like that for Decentraland. Because people can make a career out of building virtual real estate now. Like it's just a, a fact. There's big brands coming in, and there's just not enough connection and education happening. So what we have seen is cross-pollination with Sandbox and Decentral Land, with you know women in various different countries that are focused on design. So we've been helping a lot of women, you know, open studios and get started and really just lean into the metaverse as a whole. And I think that it's just such an underrepresented topic, for sure. So I'm excited for Decentraland and Sandbox and all the 3D metaverses, but focus on education across the board because they the skill sets aren't that different. And people with graphic design backgrounds, programming backgrounds, there's so much good overlap that they can just take a couple weeks even to get up and running. And people are starting their own studios all the way from Uruguay to China, all over the place. So definitely worth uh, you know watching the stream, we interview many different founders, many different founders from you know all all different countries, all different languages, and things like that. So definitely streaming live, unedited content is what the younger generation wants. I see that as to where education is going because it's unedited, it's not taken out of context, and it's just a direct connection with people on stage with viewers. And I think that that's kind of how we're approaching the the education and inclusion aspect. That's great. Morgan? Yeah, um, diversity is obviously a, a huge focus in, in Web3, and we, we like to do our part there as well um, by way of strategic partnerships. And with the Bounty Hub, it has been a, a gated platform to just our holders and our partner communities holders. So we are in talks with several different communities that have uh, holder makeup of, you know, maybe empowering women, empowering children, underprivileged kids to educate themselves in Web3. And we are kind of that extra step to then get them the jobs that they would need uh, after being educated. So, you know, in terms of marketing, uh, we, we really like to prop up those stories, um, those success stories that we have seen coming from uh, the, di the diverse crowds. Um, and really just showing to our community and, and expanding that reach on the fact that, you know, these opportunities are really for everyone. They're not just for, you know, the, the you know, big guy at the top of the ladder. Um, the more we show that to people, the more it motivates them and, and helps them realize that they have a chance at succeeding and they, they in turn get more motivated and go after it. So yeah, it's a little bit about how we're doing that. Whenever I moderate a panel, I like to kind of go a little deeper around personal stories. I gave you guys a heads up. 
you know, when it comes to diversity, sometimes proximity to the specific issues, like Brian Stevenson of the Equal Justice Movement talks about how important that is in your own journey. What story or something proximate happened in, in your lives that made you realize how important diversity and inclusion is in what you're building today? Yeah, so uh, before, before Sandstorm, uh, I started a company that was a peer-to-peer -peer lending business that was funding students to go through coding boot camps and very low risk profile. We came up with this innovative way of blending loans together so that we could include more people uh, of various different backgrounds and include them into kind of a bucket of loans that peer investors were able to purchase. And that got acquired by Max Levchin's company, a firm in 2015. And after that exit, I really wanted to lean into all that is education in not only you know, the virtual world, but also just in NFTs and crypto. So for those of you that may or may not have seen uh, my YouTube channel, I know this guy here in the front row is a fan. <laughs> but, that crypto! Yeah. So uh, I, I have been making content for six years in the space. I have about 32,000 subscribers on YouTube. It's called Hack Crypto. And I've been focused on education for many, many years just to try and bring everyone in uh, because it's, it's simplified education using my background of economics that I majored in in college. And I think that there's just space for everybody. You don't have to be hyper-technical to get into Web3 at all. You can do anything, graphic design, marketing, writing, anything. And there's not enough resources out there to do it. So that's kind of a quick, quick background on what brings me into it. I love it. Uh, we described what we're all sort of working on. As you think about the investor community, and congratulations on a great seed round in March. Congratulations on your raise on uh, your NFT project, and now he's going to be raising money very soon. He's already shared um, that he's already matching jobs with um, employees, uh, potential employees. So that's awesome. What's the investor community's response to your passion around diversity since we know many uh, investors aren't really that diverse. There's a small percentage. I mean, um, single digit VCs are women, especially people of color, also single digits. So what's the response from the investment community with the mission that you both have? For, for us, a, a lot of it was, uh, you know, they really, felt that education was a massive gap, and I'm sure that you experienced that as well, where there was a light bulb that goes off that says, okay, these people need to get educated, they need to then get jobs, and that is the only way in which this space grows. Like, there's no real other way that that can play out unless the, the whole market expands. So we raised 2.5 in 60 days because it was just an overwhelming demand from investors. It was across 11 funds, they're all amazing funds like Fenbushi and some of these really forward-thinking uh, companies, including Sandbox, who we kind of... We share an investor. We share investors. And I think that, you know, they deserve credit for seeing that vision. They de deserve credit for emphasis on education and inclusion and getting work in the space uh, because that's just the only way that this whole experiment that is Web3 works is through education and inclusion. There are many entrepreneurs in this audience who have a desire to go into Web3. What last piece of advice would you have, Morgan, to this audience right now? Be yourself, be very confident, and I always like to say, look at people doing the jobs that you want to have in Web3 and strip them down to the core skills that go into making them fantastic at those jobs. What you're gonna find is that there's a big overlap between those skills that they have and the skills that you already have in your Web2 job, your hobbies, your profession, whatever it is. It's very similar. The most daunting thing is the difference in title and the fact that we're calling it Web3. Steve? For me, uh, I'd echo what Maureen said. I think that when you are approaching any sort of new emerging market, uh, skill over school is what I always say. If you can execute something up front, join a community that you like and you like the people in it, start contributing to it, ask how you can help, do work for free, start reaching out to moderators and say, hey, I can do a graphic for you, I can write blog posts for you, and just get involved because that's immense value to that community 
and it's experience. Because what Morgan's talking about is all of this experience that people have over years, but if you're just getting started in an emerging market, do, a, do value first, present value first, and then my second piece of advice is make content. Make more content than you're comfortable making. Get on TikTok, get on YouTube, and just start publishing content about your process, how you're getting involved in Web3, and that will help more people get involved if you, you're just open about your experience with contributing to communities, writing, marketing, anything that's non-technical. That's how this whole space succeeds, is if you just share your story. I love it. I'm gonna close by saying, I, Morgan and Steve, you're probably gonna be surprised I'm gonna call you social impact entrepreneurs on this stage. Not that, I don't know if people have ever called you that. The reason I say that is I think that is in each and every one of us. It's something I proselytize about. It's something I believe in. At the core of it, we can call it Web3. We can call it technology. But really what's happening here is that we're about humans. You heard it, the fact that Morgan's suggesting success stories. Um, I was on another panel yesterday of diverse people for BFF um, that I'm supporting for women. And I ended it by saying, you know, when you see her, you can be her. And Morgan emphasized that. The success stories are creating role models for people. And that's, those are human stories. And obviously, Steve emphasized that his own journey as a first entrepreneur in Web2 opened his eyes on peer-to-peer -peer lending that many people don't have access. So at the core of it, they've shared their personal stories. And just wrap it up to say, at this moment, yes, we're creating job boards and opportunities in a new technology. But the core that I want to thank both of you gentlemen is that you're doing something for the community and for each and every one of us as humans. So thank you for having us. Thank you. Panel, everybody. Thank you. So wonderful.